If you've been doing your debugging, you might have noticed something funny. Let's say I have an integer, an array of integers, and I'm going to have three elements in it, 0, 1, 2. Let's debug this. I'm going to put a breakpoint at the end, run the debugger. I'm going to look at memory. And what's interesting is that I'm going to type ARR and we get an address. This address is the same as the address of the first element in the array, ARR index zero. It's the same. Notice how I didn't type the ampersand in the ARR, yet we're still getting the same result as the ampersand ARR index zero. If I try to print this, I'm gonna say stdc out array, And I'm also going to type the address of array index 0, F5. OK, the result is the same. I think it's easy to understand that when you call the name of the array this way, implicitly it's turning into a pointer that points to the first element of the array. If you've watched video number 17, the pointer is just an address that tells you where to go. So there's nothing too complex here. To me, the real question is why? And I did a little bit of Googling last night. It seems like there's a bit of history as to why we have the implicit conversion. Here's a paper written by the author of C, as well as a person on Stack Overflow that sort of explains one of the things that the author talked about. You can read about it on your own. I'm going to have all the links below. But just to give you a short summary, it seems like the creator of C in its early stages wanted C to have some backwards compatibility to some of the older languages. And those older languages had arrays that were completely made up of pointers. But as you know today, C, C++ has arrays that could go either way. You can have pointers in your array. You can have values inside your array. So it seems like having the name implicitly converted to a pointer that points to the first element of the array it seems like that's a nice way to make a smooth transition from some of the older languages to a newer language with a newer version of the array and move forward. For the most part, in most cases for indie games, the reason why pretty much becomes irrelevant. And if you Google this, you're going to see some people debating whether an array is a pointer or not. Uh, I think it's it could go either way depending on how you frame it. It's mostly semantics. At the end of the day, it's a bunch of ones and zeros. If you've been watching my previous videos, video number one, two, and three, as well as some of the other videos regarding pointers, you should know that at the end of the day, it's a bunch of ones and zeros. And you could have a bunch of addresses that point to a bunch of ones and zeros. And that's about it. So make sure you watch uh, the entire series of this. Anyways, it's not just int. You could also have characters. I'm going to have a character array, C array. And I'm going to say some random word here. And the name of the array the name of the array is going to give you the same result as the address of the first element of the array. F5. Okay, we have the same result. The difference with the character arrays is that your Visual Studio or the compiler that comes with the Visual Studio is going to assume that when you enter the the address of an element in a character array, it's going to assume that you want to print out a string. If we debug this, F9 here, debugger, I'm going to look at memory again. So here I'm going to type character array, C-A-R-R. -R. We get the address, we see the values, and I'm going to type the address of C A R R index zero, and we're going to get the same result. Okay, it's the same. So don't get confused by the C out. All this means is that when you call the name of the array, usually it gets converted to a pointer that points to the first element. Now let me show you another thing that might be confusing. You, when you were dealing with character arrays, you might have heard of, or you might have come across something called null terminators, or people call them null characters, 
or null terminated string. Let me write this character array in a different way. I'm going to say character array, I'm just going to call it h. We're going to have five elements. It's going to have h, e, r, e, just like character array here. And at the end, I'm going to have zero. These two character arrays are going to be exactly the same. If I debug this again, F9 at the end, debugger. I'm going to look at memory. I'm going to look at character ARR. OK, remember this result. I'm going to type in H. And without before type enter, it's, I'm going to say it's going, going to look exactly the same. OK, it's just a different address, a different array. Looks exactly the same. You're also going to notice the zero at the end. Here, I typed it in manually. Here, the compiler automatically put it there. The zero is called a null terminator, or the null character. The word here is the null terminator string. Let me show you another example to make this a little clearer. I'll call this one HH. It's going to have five elements. And this time, instead of initializing all of the, the elements, I'm only going to initialize the first one. I'll call this H. So this time, I don't have the null character. Let's see the difference when I do a C out. I'm going to C out H, H, F5. OK, we're getting a really strange result here. We only typed in H. The rest are uninitialized values, and the compiler doesn't know where the string ends. If I do a little bit of debugging, F9 on the debugger, I'm going to type in HH. OK, we have our value here, H. And the rest are uninitialized. So at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of ones and zeros that are in contiguous memory, which is an array, a bunch of ones and zeros that are right next to each other. You also have the array name that gives you the address of the first element. You also have the null character that tells you where a string ends. And that's about it. So try not to be confused when you see syntax like this. For your homework, try debugging this yourself. Make sure you understand this before you go on. You have to understand values, references, ones and zeros. Once you do, reading code will be so much easier. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, you can reach me on my Discord server. I have all the links below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.